there always needs to be a balance between being too informative and focusing too much on the narratives. And with the former, focusing too much on the information, the facts, and being informative. In terms of producing content, especially video content, it's not really fulfilling to make content that's too much on the informative side or of stating the facts because I can just Google it. I can just go to a portal or a search engine and look the information up myself. It'd be more quick and it'd be less taxing on my attention span. And also, if you focus too much on information in terms of anything, in terms of facts, you need a narrative. For those that study law, a case without a narrative is a crappy case. The facts are there, the information is there, that there's always room for arguments, very merchant law system. Or maybe you can call it an Anglo issue too, or something Western, the fact that people argue out their cases, but it's getting kind of ridiculous. And that's kind of epitomized by the Trayvon issue, where there's too much emphasis on fucking narratives. Where Zimmerman is just a fake wannabe racist white thug. They have this picture with the orange prison jumpsuit and Trayvon as a 12 year old boy. And with the opposite narrative, you have Trayvon as the thug 17 year old, the nasty grill, and middle finger on the camera and Zimmerman as this nice guy that was contributing to his community. A lot of narrative, not a lot of facts that are being presented, although there is a need for it. Too much narrative and you get crap, you get Mr. Wonka 7. Well, not necessarily, not narrative heavy, but where's the facts? Where's the facts in any of this? What? How am I going to get the who, what, when, where, and why from the dumbasses on Facebook ranting and raving and you know, the, the guys that are carcinogenic guys that are toxic and poisonous to your news feed. Of course I'm talking about lean. Shots fired. But yeah, you need a narrative as well. A big problem with being too much on the fact side is that sometimes there is a need for a narrative because things are kind of fuzzy in law. What makes something first degree murder or second degree murder? How do you know the guy thought about it now or he's always been thinking about it or planning it since the day before or any time prior? that day. How do you know that, for example, with first degree homicide or second degree, not, not homicide, homicide is a generic term, first degree and second degree manslaughter. How do you know that the guy didn't just get angry right there? Or that maybe he is just a reckless guy that likes to make rash decisions and he ended up killing 
that guy by bashing his head when he just wanted to you know, hurt the guy or like startle him, but he accidentally swung legitimately. Um, yeah, terrible analogy, but bear with me here. There's a lot of fuzziness. You need to take the facts and discard some of them and kind of make a neat little story. And that's what sells. Stories sell. They really do. And when even court cases can be democratized, you know that stuff like this can happen. It does. That's all I gotta say on the matter. I like how I made this about videos and then I made it about a law thing. That's just how I go. Narratives and information there needs to be a good balance. For me I say a lot of narrative does a good way for implanting someone into the views for making them have that and fix them on those views where the facts and the information that's good in the beginning when it comes to shaking the person up from their fixed perspective because sometimes people they have emotional boundaries and you need to rip that apart, not with an interesting narrative, but with reality. Anyway, y'all guys can suck my dick. I don't like any of you.